Hi, this is Tim. Today we're going to continue for our PID series and start to understand what the P or proportional is of the PID. For this video, we are using one of our Compact Logics trainers and we're also using Industrial Concepts PID trainer. And we have videos on how we've integrated those. We have them on how we have set up the PID in Studio 5000 and Connected Components Workbench and RS Logics 500. So look down in the description, we'll have a link to where you can find all of that. Also, please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to our channel. We put out at least one automation video a week. And any questions that come up, feel free to put them in the comments. Your question this week could easily be next week's automation topic. But when it comes to PID in Studio 5000, there are two equations that you could be using. And it's either the independent gains formula or the dependent gains formula. And there are a few differences that we'll get into later. First, I want to just take this video to really understand what it is that the proportional does in the PID. Because I hear a lot of times, and in fact, I probably thought it, maybe even have stated it, is that proportional is multiplied by the error to try to correct it. Well, it's not exactly true. Proportional is actually multiplied by the change in the error to try to correct the PID. So we're gonna walk through some exercises first to make sure we understand what the proportional is doing and also when it's doing it, because I think this is important. So we're gonna start in our program that we left off with last time. The only difference, depending on if you're coming from the Studio 5000 PID setup video or the AutoTune video that I added is that on the original one, I had PID1, and now we're at PID2. And that's where I deleted that instruction, but that's no big deal there. But first, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a simulated level. That way we can look at what this PID is actually doing. So we're going to go to, let's, let's go to our main ladder routine. So this will kind of be away from our PID and everything that's going on in it. And we're going to start, well, we're going to add a rung. And then we're going to add a timer, a T-O-N timer. And let's just call this our simulated level update. And we'll go ahead and create that. And it'll be a timer type. And our preset is going to be 1,000 for one second. And then let's bring down and examine off instruction. And we're going to look at the simulated level update. And we've done this many times. What we're making is a timer that is going to give us a true pulse every X amount of milliseconds. So we're going to look at the DN bit. And so right now, every thousand milliseconds, this DN bit is going to be true. And we have videos where we've done this before, if you're not sure about it. Then let's bring another rung down and let's look at that simulated done bit. Let's use an examine on instruction and then let's add another bit and let's just call this count down. Well, I will need to create that one. And then let's put an add instruction. And we're going to add our simulated level. And we'll need to create that one. And let's make that a real. It'll probably default to a double integer, but we want that to be a real. And then our source B is going to be a value of one. And our destination is going to be that simulated level again. Now, let's add a compare statement. Behind it, we're going to grab a greater than or equal to, and we're going to say if the simulated level is greater than or equal to 9, then we are going to latch our count down bit. Now let's make a branch around this. And here, whoops, here, I made a mistake on my countdown. My first countdown, I put an examine on. That should be an examine off. So if you highlight the instruction part of it and hit enter, 
we can change that XIC to an XIO. All right, now let's highlight these four instructions right here and let's copy them and then click on that lower branch and we're gonna paste them because we're just gonna modify these some. And first we're gonna do the exact opposite change to that countdown on this one. We're gonna change it back to an XIC. We're gonna change our add instruction to a sub for subtract. And then we're gonna change our greater than or equal to to a less than or equal to. And we're gonna see if it's less than or equal to one. And instead of latching that bit, we're gonna unlatch that bit. So first let's go ahead and put this in and make sure we understand what we just did. Okay, so you should see your level incrementing every second now. So we're at seven, eight, then down to seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then it's gonna go back up. So all this is gonna do is simulate this level changing up and down. So now let's go to our PID routine. And right now our process variable is the actual level coming off of our level sensor up here. We're gonna change that to that simulated level. So let's go ahead and start a pending rung edit. And then let's change this to simulated level. And go ahead and put that in. Okay, so we see that, yeah, okay, well, we went up to 100. And all right, now we're dropping back down. So we're seeing some action on our simulated PIDE. But now let's go in here. First, let's take the integral out of it. So let's set the integral to zero. And let's bring our proportional down to 0.1. And the main thing here is I just want to get it where it's staying within the bounds of the zero and the 100. And we're going to talk more about, well, one, what happens when you go out of the bounds of that. But right now, I just want to focus on this proportional. So it does look like it's going up and down now in that range. So now what I want to do is I want to set up a trend so we can see visually what is going on here. So let's right click the simulated level and find trend simulated level, right? And you should see something that once it kind of builds out a little bit, it's gonna look like an up and down kind of stair step. Except for, all right, first of all, my range is way too small for what we wanna do. So let's right click it and go to chart properties and let's go to our X axis and let's change our time span. I want to change it from two seconds to one minute. And now we should see more of a stair step going up and down. And yeah, okay, that's looking like something we can follow what's going on and it's not so fast or us. Now I want to add that output from the PID. So right click anywhere on the graph and let's go back to chart properties. And let's go to the pins tab and let's add configure tags. And we want to select for our scope, the PID program. And we're gonna start typing PID. And now, again, if you're coming here from the original, hey, here's how to configure your PID, then you're gonna be using PID 01. But then if you did the auto-tune exercise I did, mine, the active one is zero two. Mainly select whatever the active PID is. And if you're not sure of that, let's escape and make sure we know that. Go back to the PID program. And right here underneath the instruction name, it says PID underscore zero two. So that's the one we're doing. So let's go back to our trends tab, which also Notice that you can navigate all this right up here. So we're on that trend tab. And let's right click the chart properties, go back to our pins tab, add configure tags. And for our scope, let's select that PID program and then start typing PID E. And again, for mine it's 02 and then dot C V E U. Now notice it's wanting to fill in max. We don't want the max. We just want the C V E U. Now here's the trick that even now stumps me so much. 
is if you just click the OK button here, you won't add it. You've got to click the Add button right there. And then you can click the OK button, and we can OK out of that. And then it's going to look like your trend is frozen. Well, it is frozen because when you add something like that to it, it has to stop it. They don't actually tell you that, though. So up here in the top left, you've got to find that Run button again. So we're going to click the Run button, and it's going to start over. Okay, and all right, it's starting to build out into about the same thing. But the main thing I want you to notice here is that the process variable is changing each time we have a change in the level. Okay, while we're here looking at this trend, another thing is right now it's showing whole numbers here. And we are, we're incrementing whole numbers on our simulated level, so that's not a big deal. But our PID program is actually giving out some decimals there. So let's right click our chart properties again and let's go back to the Y axis. And right here, display scale decimal places. Let's put that on two. That'll give us a little more precision. Okay, just thought about one thing. Some of you guys may be thinking, hey, well, no, that is the trend update rate that's making it choppy. It's not the actual proportional change. So let's make one more change just to make sure we understand that changes to the process variable only happen when there's a change in the error set point. Let's go back to our main routine where we put that simulated level. And let's change our simulated level update rate to 10,000. We're just going to take it to 10 seconds. And now let's go back to that trend tab. So now it's really clear there is no change in our output unless there is a change in our process variable. So each time that we see a change in the error amount between our level set point and our actual level, it's going to take that value and multiply it by the proportional gain to determine the change in the output. So let's put that timer back just so we can speed things back up a little bit. And now when we look at it, it should look like it's going back to exactly what it was doing. Now let's talk about the independent and dependent variable, at least as far as the proportional change. Let's go ahead and go to our PIDE. Let's open it up. And right now we're on the dependent equation type. Let's go to the independent equation type. And now go back to our trend. If you watch it a while, you'll see it made no difference in the change to the process variable, either the amount or the frequency. And that's because right now we have our integral and our derivative at zero. So if you actually work the dependent equation compared to the independent equation, they're going to come out with the same thing. So I hope that part gets you a better understanding of when the update of that proportional happens. So now let's play with the simulator a little bit and let's see, you know, what does a small proportional look like compared to a bigger proportional you know, and is there any magic number? And mainly, let's start understanding why we need the I or the integral in this equation. So let's go back to our PID and let's take our simulated level back out. So we'll take that back and put it as level in inches and put that back in. And we'll go ahead and start the trainer and hopefully, okay, we didn't break it too bad, it is working. And it's looking good. Now let's look at our trend. I think we do need to do some work to our trend. Yes, we do. So right now we're still looking at this simulated level here. And configure tags. And let's just remove both of these. And then let's add, first we want our level in inches. So we'll add that. And then let's get our level set point. Okay, and click OK on that. And, all right, and right now, yeah, we definitely have a lot of scribble going on. Uh, but one, this axis here is very, very short. It's 6.1 to 6.8. So let's go back to our chart properties. And let's look at our Y axis. And let's see, let's just make this 0 to 12 because really that's going to be the range of both of these. All right, so now we have all that set up. 
let's talk about what different gains look like as far as how it operates. So we're going to start at zero. In fact, all I'm doing is I'm turning the power off to the PID trainer. And if we go over here to our PID routine, right now our process variable is 100%. And let's start with proportional of one. We go to our trend. All right, right now it's showing our level is at zero. Our set point is at six. We're gonna hit the power on it. All right, we got a big overshoot. All right, and now, see if I can get my hand in sync here. I think I got it. But we're going up and down, up and down, up and down. And this is the over and under shoot that you see on a lot of proportional type setups. Also note in this case, it is higher than the set point. So we're not even bouncing where eventually we're going to level in on that set point. It's going to level out probably to a steady state error, probably a little high if we gave it long enough. Now let's turn it back off and let's change our PID proportional to 0.1. And try to be coordinated and do it real quick because then you can get your trend back going and see both of them at the same time. So we got that big overshoot again and now we're stuck because the amount of change in the error multiplied by the proportional is not enough change in the control variable to get the thing to go down. So that is way too small without integral or derivative. So let's try somewhere in the middle this time. So let's go back and change this to 0.5. And we'll hit it again. All right. And okay, we, we're definitely not oscillating, but we're not getting down really well. So we have a steady state error, and probably it will remain somewhere that high. So it definitely needs to be higher than that. So let's, let's go ahead and take it a little higher and just see what happens. So let's change it. 2.75. Try it again. All right, so this doesn't have nearly the oscillation of the one, and it's not stuck as high, but we still have a very large steady state error. And so the issue is you'll never actually get rid of this error. It's gonna stay there forever unless something forces this ball down a little bit. Or we use some other interaction to change it. And that's gonna be the integral that we talk about next time, which has more to do with changing it over time. So I hope this video has been helpful. I really play with a lot of different ways on how to explain the proportional and hopefully that first exercise where we simulated the levels and you could see the actual changes when and how they happen helped. Also, I hope you understand kind of why a proportional control doesn't work because that's really the key concept to understand out of this video is one, yeah, what the proportional does and two, that it alone can't do the job. So next video, we're going to talk about the integral. Again, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Till next time. Hi, this is Till. And this is Amber of TW Controls. We run the automation store. Hey, thanks for finding our channel. Here's a playlist with some similar videos. And YouTube thinks you'll like this video. Please like our video and subscribe to our channel. And if our videos have helped you make some money and you're not using our products, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Till next time. See ya.